Welcome back. Here we go. Here's the answers. Um, as you see, I've done some work already, and I've actually chosen my formulas that I'm going to use to find the area of these rhombis, rhombuses, whatever. Area of this particular one, I'm using the kite formula because I have the two diagonals that I figured I'm going to find the lengths of. Over here, I know the height, and I realized quickly I could find the base pretty quickly. So I'm using the formula for the area of a parallelogram. Let's do that one first. That's the easier one. So over here, you remember the perimeter is 52. What I did is I just took 52, the distance around the actual shape. Since it's a rhombus, I know four equal sides are going to be there. So I divided by four equal parts, which gave me 13. That means this piece right here is actually the 13 meters. So is this one. So is PA. So is PK. So all of those are 13, but I only need one of them because I'm looking for the base because that's what I need, because I don't have the height to plug it into the formula. So that's all I did. The base was 13, the height was 25, plug those numbers in and multiply it and check. We're all good to go. So that was 325 meters squared. There's that. And this one over here, what you had to realize is I already drew this in there. Six and six are there because 12 is the actual diagonal. The diagonals are bisected and they are perpendicular. That's important because this triangle right here is actually 30. 60, 90 triangle. Because I know that that's 30, I know that that's 90, so that means this has to be 60. So as we remember, across my 30 is what x is, across my 60 is what x root 3 is, and across my 90 is 2x. So 30 is right there. So across my 30 is over here, which is what x is supposed to be. So that's pretty simple. x is already a 6. I'm done, really, because all that I have to do, as you remember, we take the 6 and plug it in here for x, so that means 6 would be one side, 6 root 3 would be the other one, and 12 would be the other one. So across my 90 degree angle is 12, ooh, that's nice. Across my 60 degree angle then is 6 root 3, so the length of this diagonal is actually 6 root 3 for that little piece, and 6 root 3 for that little piece. So if I added those together, be careful, it's 12 root 3. Because remember, they're like radical parts, so you just simply add those things together. Back to algebra, if you had 6x and 6x, they're like terms, so you'd add them together, and you get 12x. Nothing goofy happens to the x, it just stays x. Same concept applies here. Root 3, root 3, stays root 3, but you get 12 root 3. So the length of the diagonal from k to a, ach, k, whatever, that diagonal is 12 root 3. And there you go. And I plugged in the 12 right there because that was originally given to me to be the one diagonal. So 1 half times 12 gives me 6. Bring down to 12 root 3. And I multiply 6 times 12 root 3. Be careful. That's out of jail. 12 is out of jail. So that's all I can multiply. I don't take the thing out of jail and multiply it to the thing in jail. <laughs> so I would get 72 root 3 miles squared. Now, here's something cool. If the directions here said to round it to the nearest tenth, like on a PSSA or any other type of question, um, or SAT, well, then you have to go further and take 72 in your calculator and take that times the decimal equivalent of root 3. And that will give you your actual decimal. However, as we've seen many times in class, it doesn't say that. So you need to keep your answer in uh, radical form. 72 root 3 miles squared. There you go. Area of aromas. Rock and roll.